With the Bitcoin 2022 conference going on right now in Miami and with all the hype going on with crypto and NFTs in the metaverse, I wanted to take a second and give you my thoughts from the perspective of a professor. Bitcoin and crypto have valid components and aim to solve a lot of world problems. Unfortunately, most of the time when people are introduced to Bitcoin, it's from people like Chad down the street. Think about it, bro. Decentralized, government can't touch it. Is Facebook digital or can you hold it in your hand? Exactly. That's the kind of money I'm looking for. Take it easy, Chad. Though Bitcoin is much more complex than this, I wanted to give you guys five quick points defining Bitcoin, why it's valuable, how it's different than current money, decentralization, and how to invest safely. I will tell you right off the bat that after about 100 hours of research that I've put into this topic, I am more pro-Bitcoin than I am against it. I do think that Bitcoin can be used throughout the whole world and it'll be used to supplement the currency of the native country, but I don't think it's going to overtake all money and be the only money long term. So let's get right to it. Here's what you need to know. Bitcoins are digital coins you can send through the internet. Bitcoins are transferred directly from person to person via the net without going through a bank or clearinghouse. This means that the fees are much lower. You can use them in every country. Your account cannot be frozen. And there are no prerequisites or arbitrary limits. Bitcoin network is secured by individuals called miners. Miners are rewarded newly generated Bitcoins for verifying transactions. After transactions are verified, they are recorded in a transparent public ledger. Your Bitcoins are kept in your digital wallet on your computer or mobile device. Now a key note here and something that a lot of people don't understand is that Bitcoin or BTC is bought in units of Satoshi. It's the exact same thing where $1 is equal to 100 pennies. One Bitcoin is worth 100 million Satoshi. For example, as of today, Bitcoin is around $43,000 for one Bitcoin. But if you wanted to, you could buy $10 worth of Bitcoin and what you would receive is 0.00020868 of a BTC. So now that we have it pretty much defined, why is it valuable? To me, one of the most important aspects about this asset is the fact of its absolute scarcity. There will ever only be 21 million of these Bitcoins ever. If you think about some of the most valuable things on this planet, it's because they're scarce. It's because they're rare. Things like diamond or gold, or even more than that, original paintings. Things that just can't be done again. There's not going to be another Van Gogh. So knowing that there's only going to be 21 million of these Bitcoin, eventually when more people start wanting to have them, they're going to be worth more. Another thing that makes Bitcoin so valuable is the fact that it has a halving schedule. As previously mentioned, miners are rewarded with Bitcoin for verifying blocks of transactions. This reward is cut in half every 210,000 blocks mined or about every four years. After every halving event, Bitcoin has jumped up in price which totally makes sense. So basically what happens is if it takes a miner 100 hours to mine one Bitcoin right now, once we get through the happening every four years, now for that same 100 hours of work, a miner's only going to receive half of a Bitcoin. And then four years from then, they're only gonna receive a fourth of a Bitcoin. So that means that per hour work, the Bitcoin is worth more. Anytime something's harder to get or more expensive to receive, it's going to cost more, which brings the value up. Along with supply and demand of the fact that there's only gonna be 21 million of them, this is what makes it very valuable. So how is it different than current money? One of the biggest ways is that it's bored which means that it can go all over the world and can be used anywhere. We just saw this and are seeing this with the war with Russia and Ukraine. Absolutely revolutionary things happen because Russia is a powerhouse compared to little old Ukraine. But what happened was Ukraine asked for help. Over $100 million worth of Bitcoin was sent to Ukraine by regular people. Just people that thought, hey, we need to let the little guy have a chance. Because of that, they were able to upgrade their military and have the resources needed to fend off the enemy. And now countries aren't being able to be bullied. That's just one small thing that Bitcoin is doing 
that's already going to be changing the world of finance that we know. Next is this idea of decentralization. Decentralization just means that there is no central party that is pulling the strings, that's in charge of it. And the craziest part of it is the dude that invented it straight ghosted everyone. Nobody even knows who he actually is. This was by design and it actually makes a lot of sense due to the whole decentralization thing. If the homie was like, we need to be 100% decentralized and have no central party pulling the strings, but I'm gonna be in charge of it and I'll be like the king of Bitcoin and the rest of you guys can all be equal. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, that's the thing with Bitcoin. It totally cuts out financial institutions. It cuts out banks. It's the fact that if I have one Bitcoin in my account and I am paying you a Bitcoin, I can pay it to you and within a couple of minutes, you have a Bitcoin now in your account. There's no huge fee to send that across. And more importantly, there wasn't a crazy time. And for you to just hold that Bitcoin in your account, you're not going to be charged a certain fee because we don't have to pay a corporation to do what we can just do on our own. Now, I will admit that holding a bunch of money, a substantial amount of money on like a USB drive, not ideal because a lot of things can happen with that. That's easily stolen, that's easily lost. There's a lot of different things with people forgetting their passwords. So I do think that there is still a lot of room for this whole Bitcoin and cryptocurrency world to grow in that way. And so speaking of safety, how to invest safely. This is the last topic that I wanna go over and it's probably going to affect you the most, especially if you do decide to invest in something like this. Just like I say on pretty much all of my videos, only invest in 100% what you understand. If you kinda get it, that's great. Keep doing your research. I would 100% recommend that you start to read or research in a way where you're learning about Bitcoin as a ideology or as a theory rather than just as an investment. Don't even worry about the dollar amount or what it could grow to. I want you to think about what could it actually be? How could it help? How can it solve problems? If you come to the conclusion that it can do these big, huge things and these big ideas, then eventually it's going to be worth something as well. The best advice that I got was just to watch Bitcoin for two weeks. So you can download the Coinbase app, you can even watch it on Robinhood, you can look at it from coinmarketcap.com, but at least once a day for two weeks, just look at where the price is and watch the whole crypto market. Along with that, you're doing your research, learning about crypto, you're learning about Bitcoin as an ideology, and then hopefully all the puzzle pieces start to become a more clear picture for you. If you do finally decide to invest in Bitcoin, the best way that I would recommend doing it would be dollar cost averaging. So say you want to invest a total of $1,000. The safest way that I think that you could at least get started into this is to say, okay, I'm going to put $100 in every Monday for 10 Mondays. That'll come out to $1,000. The reason why that's the safest is if this happens to be the top of the price range for a while, if you would have put $1,000 in today and then over the next couple weeks it goes straight down, you will be at a loss. But if you were to put $100 in today and then it goes down a little bit and then you put $100 in, next week and it goes down a little bit, at least you wouldn't have put it in at the top and lost all of that money. And then on the other hand, if it does just keep going up, you're putting $100 in every step of the way. And so you're starting to make money on that 100 and then on 200 and so on. I'd suggest that you use a trusted platform like Coinbase because the crypto world is still a little bit shady and people are getting hacked all the time. And this one is one of the safest ones that I've found, even though the fees are a little bit higher, but I'd rather pay a little bit higher of a fee and have my assets a little more protected. Eventually, you'll want to learn about transferring your assets to a cold storage wallet like the Nano X, but that's for a different video. Go ahead and comment down below with what you found to be the most helpful and also let me know what questions you have so that I know what to talk about for the next one of these. Good luck and be safe out there, friends.